This is on Drop Rate, a series where I hunt items in Old School RuneScape within their stated rates according to the OSRS wiki. If I get the items within the rates, for example up to 10,000 Lava Dragons for a Visage, I get to keep everything I earn during the grind. If I do not receive it, I have to give away half the loot to you guys, the viewers. With that, let's get into today's episode. This is Tempros, one of the few bosses in Old School RuneScape defeated not by combat, but instead purely through skilling. As early as level 35 fishing, you can take on Temporos, and when it comes to my current progress here, these are my collection log unlocks for this boss as of now. This time around, let's attempt to receive one of the few missing items, in specific the Harpoon Fish, which has a drop rate of 1 in 1600. We have officially got into the grind, and I'm actually doing it on world 422 to start off with. I think technically doing it solo is more points an hour, but to start off with, I want to kind of get into it, get more used to the minigame again, and therefore I'm going to be doing it in masses. Also, I do have an XP counter up here on the top. You can see I'm almost at 3000, and I'm starting off at 78 fishing, so you will see my progress during the video. If you're doing Temporos and the Mass Wards, this is pretty much how it goes. You begin with fishing a full inventory of Harpoon Fish on the fishing spots. When you can see a green fishing spot spawn, click on this as it duplicates the fishes you get sometimes. When you get a colossal wave closing in, you have to click on this totem pole to grab onto it, otherwise you actually lose stuff. When you have a full inventory, run over to this shrine and cook all the fish. This grants you more points, but not more fishing experience, so this is not necessary if you only want experience. When they are all cooked, run up to the ship and click on these ammunition crates and you start dealing damage to the boss, which also gives you fishing experience. I intentionally did not cook one of them to show you guys the XP drop, it is exactly the same for the uncooked one, so if you only care about fishing experience, you don't have to cook them. After the boss's defense is down, you can run down here and actually fish on the spirit pool and deal actual damage to the boss. There is also two additional ways of getting some bonus points and that is why I have the buckets of water in my inventory. When these clouds come in, you can actually extinguish the fire and you see my points, I got 40 points for doing that. And the second one is sometimes when you tether to this pole after the wave, the totem pole will have some seaweed on it and you can actually repair it. Rinse and repeat this until the boss is 0 HP, complete the round, leave and go again. Now let's quickly talk about the point system. At 2000 points in the minigame, you can start gaining at least one point. After that, for every 700 points in the minigame, you get awarded one extra permit. Now let's say you gain 600 more points. That still increases your chance inside of that bracket to get one additional point. So the more points that you have is always going to be better. There is actually a total of 8 combat achievements you can complete on this boss, but I actually have all of them already completed, so in this video we will not be doing any of those, but on screen here are all of them if you want to do it yourself. When you do actually extinguish those fires by the way in this area, you do use the water in these buckets that I have here, so that is why I have the buckets, and to fill them you need to click on the water pump up there on the boat, or down here on this bridge or whatever this is. And that is why I have this humidify spell with the runes in my inventory on the Lunar Spellbook, because if I press this, not the best time to do it now, it fills all of them right away. And this is actually a really good mechanic to make use of when you're doing it solo, because then you will have to do it quite a lot as you have to put out all the fires on your own, and having to run to this tap or on the boat all the time is annoying. I do have to say it's very nice to have a good excuse to actually level some of my skills. This is going to be the first fishing level of the grind. Hopefully we will get a lot of these 79 fishing. We can do sea turtles, nice. Wait, what is going on with this guy? Do you see how slow his fishing animation is compared to everyone else? Look at that! If anyone knows why that is, I mean, I'm confused, he's confused, if you know what it is, please let me know. And there we go, that is the first 200 permits collected, only 1.4k maximum left to go, and we also almost hit 80 fishing, so let's do the first looting session of the video. Alright, so here we are with the reward pool, we have 200 reward permits, and if I do get a duplicate tackle box or fish barrel from this, it is actually going to be turned into 25 soaked pages. That is just basically how it works, that is not going to be the case with the Tomo water, I will just get more of them pretty much, you can get infinite. 
And of course, the goal is the big harpoon fish. The pets would also be very nice to get, of course. It's a hard pet to get. And uh, I have also added the loot tracker at the bottom of the screen. So as soon as I start here, let's go ahead and do that. You will now see the loot tracker update. 260 GP for the first one. Nice. So I just got a casket. I actually got two of them now. These are one in 20. We're getting so many of them. They actually give jewelry, rune items, and most importantly a bunch of clue scrolls so if we get lucky we can get a bunch of these and do a couple of clues at the end of course you can also get just normal drops of soaked pages like these ones i'm getting eight and nine these are unfortunately not worth a lot i think they are right below 1000 gp each so yeah they're not a great drop to get and we are about to be halfway done with the first opening at 182,000 gp gained so far it's at least something i guess Oh, we got the first 25 soaked pages, which means we got a duplicate fish barrel or tackle box. So I guess that it can, if that is kind of lucky, even though it is literally just a couple of thousand GP to get the duplicate, but it's nice to see it. It is not looking like a very eventful ending here, but uh, I can definitely say we got very lucky on the caskets. I, they are 1 in 20s, so we pretty much got double the amount of caskets that we should have got. And we are down to the last permit for 200. We made 493k. And now we have something to do. I think it is 1,250 spirit flakes. You can use an angler piece on Gita Primes. 1,200, all right. And you can now make them into spirit angler boots, which I now have the entire set for. Which is actually a really good thing, because that is now another collection log slot on the Temporal's log. We only have the pet and the big harpoon fish left. But now I actually don't need a rope anymore that I was using to tether to the mast when the waves come in. This set actually, when you have the full one, counts as a rope. And with the first 200 permits done, I am now going to do a couple of solos and see how it is, how I like it. I want my grinds to be a bit casual and chill, but if it's just way too many points an hour, I will do this instead. So what really is the difference between doing this solo and in a team? Well, the main difference is that you have to keep track of storm intensity in solo because you want this to be as close to 100 as possible, but never reach 100. If it reaches 100, you actually fail the entire fight and get zero points, so that can just never happen. The storm intensity is always reset when the boss goes to zero energy and pops down so you can actually DPS its essence. The goal of doing the solo method is to down the boss three times and on the third time you actually defeat the boss. After you downed it three times, if you do not defeat the boss, you will also fail the fight, as the storm intensity will go up extremely fast after that, and you just cannot keep up with it. So this is normally where the boss fight would end, and I have time to kill the boss here, but I am instead going to stop right before it's defeated, around one more tick I think, yep that's good, and now I just keep on fishing and I down it one more time, and this is when you get the extra points. Of course this is where the divine rune pouch comes extremely in handy with the humidify spell, as I am the sole person who has to douse all of these fires, and having to run to these pumps all the time would be very inconvenient. Definitely a bit of a warm up round, but let's see how many points, 7 points instead of the normal 4 to maybe 5 maximum points normally, so yeah that's really good. I am actually going to try to do a fourth round this time by preparing a full inventory of fish and preload the cannons before it goes up the last time. So the boss is down right now but I got a full inventory of fish prepared already and when the energy reaches 100 on the boss and it goes up again, you will see how fast the storm intensity for the fourth round actually raises. But because I am preparing the fish in the buckets now to shoot right away when it comes up, it is downed before the storm intensity hits 100, so I get a lot of extra points. Oh, whoopsie, a uh, professional YouTuber here. I got 80 fishing and I completely missed it. I guess I've been AFKing a bit too much. And oh my god, now I'm running into the flames and losing my stuff. Everything is going away. Oh my god, I forgot about this. You can buy Smoldering Stone. It is kind of expensive, but you can use this on a harpoon to sometimes actually instantly cook the fish right away when you fish it. So let's apply it to the harpoon. Oh, I need 75 fishing and 85 cooking. I am 81. Okay, so let's just rush 85 cooking, I guess. I am going to be doing one tick current ones. I have never done this before, but uh, okay. Yeah, I'm definitely screwing this up, but you can see the XP rates can be kind of insane. 
One million experience later, that is now 85 cooking completed. That took like no time at all. So let's actually move back my inventory to the right spot that might look right, I think. And let's go ahead and make the, uh, I don't know what it's called, the Infernal Harpoon, I guess. And proceed with the infusion, get some experience as well. And how many charges does this have? Oh, it just says 100%. All right, well, let's go and use it. Oh, we have the answer to why that other guy's animation was slower with the infernal harpoon. It is definitely looking slower. There is a one in three chance when I fish to actually cook it right away. And you can see how many I've already got in this inventory. Now on top of that, at Temporos, this is even more overpowered than at other places. Because normally when you cook fish with this effect, you actually lose the fish as well. It gets destroyed in the process for the experience boost. But at Temporos, you keep them. Oh my god, I can already feel such a massive difference. I never had time to cook fish. Two basically full inventories on the first round before it hits 100%. It was not even close. Now I can do it easily. I even have so much extra time now that I can run around and repair the masts and extinguish some fires to get some extra points between the rounds. So that is definitely going to turn out to be more points. That was definitely the easiest 10 reward permits I've ever done. If you've been watching this video as someone who has done a lot of Temporal Solo before, you might be thinking, why has he not got into the firefighter method yet? It is great points, and it's not even that complicated. And I thought it would be very complicated and very stressful, but after doing it for a bit, I feel like I can explain it pretty easily to you guys and why it's extremely good. The whole point of the firefighter method is basically to let the fires spread as much as possible to then douse them for the maximum amount of points. The way you control this is basically let the first fire spawn and after that get the boss's energy below 10% where it cannot create waves that remove the fires. In the downtime where you do not DPS the boss or you have to fish, you basically let the fires just spread as much as possible and when the boss goes down you have time to actually douse all the fires as you down the boss 4 times in total and you only have to DPS in 2 of them. So the rotation is going to be, down the boss after you spread flames, clear all the flames that you can until a wave appears. After that you can either DPS the boss or clear flames again, but just make sure that you will have at least two DPS moments on the boss, and in the rest of the times you can just clear as many flames as you possibly can. Jesus, even when doing this kind of incorrectly and in a bad way, we are reaching the first time 10,000 points for 12 permits. No way! We failed it at 1% essence HP of the boss. God damn it, dude. I had so many points, like 10,000. We have a massive new record, over 11,000 points, quite even a bit over 11,000 points. I've actually been having a lot of fun doing the firefighter method. I mean, it's just two good points and it's actually not that boring to do. It makes it a bit more fun. I think it is finally time to do some looting again. This should be 10 points. Yes, it is. For 350 points after this one, we've done 550 lootings. I've been getting 60 points an hour, so it's been around 6 hours since the last looting. On the way to getting those points, I'm now 81 fishing, so we got another level. And also, my Infernal Harpoon has 86% charge left, so this is going to last a very, very long time. But let's get into the looting, get this 200 all the way to 550. 50. Coming up on the first milestone, 50 permits fished up, nothing so far. And we are now slowly creeping over the 100 permit mark, and we only have 3 caskets this time, so I should have got 5 at this point, so we are now a bit unlucky on the caskets for this opening. I am getting absolutely nothing from this opening. We are soon done with 200 of the 350. I did catch up a bit on the caskets and in one we have done 200. There is the 400 overall mark. And we have at least, I can say, hit over 1 million GP from just the permit loot. Which is at least something. Okay, well, let's just say I hope this is the most uneventful opening I will have in the entire video. 
because we have five left permits to go and we got absolutely nothing. Of course, you get some fishing experience for doing this and the money is uh, not great. We got like uh, 1.2 million worth of loot in that, but we still have three rounds of 350 points left to go for the harpoon fish. So there is still a good chance to get it. We are going to be ending up after this one at 100 Temporous rounds completed in this video. Of course, that's going to be 200 KC as we started with 100. Let's see that number 200 kill count on Temporous and we have 178 permits again. And what all this means is that on average, I'm getting around 7.3 permits per round and 8,800 fishing experience per Temporos KC. So that is pretty good stats and uh, we're going to probably end with quite a good amount over a million fishing experience if I don't get spooned. I have really been in the zone so I went a bit overboard on this one. I went 450 points and that means if we open all of these now I'm going to be hitting exactly 1000 permits done. So let's see if we can actually get the harpoon fish. Just actually looting all of these is going to take like 20 minutes. So let's reach that 1000 mark and hopefully get the big harpoon fish. Oh, we get the first 25 soaked pages. So that is a duplicate of the fish barrel or the tactical box. Oh my god, we're getting so many of these dupes. Why do I keep getting these? I would love if the if I would get any dupes at all, it would ideally be the Tome of Water, but they are very rare, but uh, maybe we can get one. Soon down to the last 100 permits, but uh, from how long it's actually been taking to get to this point, I have kind of realized how crazy the drop rate of the pet for this boss is. It's a 1 in 8,000, which means the pet is like 150 to 200 hours to get. So I wouldn't mind spooning it now. I mean, uh, I'll definitely take that if I would get it. And these are the last permits. That is now 1,000 permits on the counter. We made 300 or 3.24 million GP so far. Pretty mediocre opening. Nothing too crazy. Got some duplicate tackle boxes and fish barrels, but that's about it. Actually buying the smoldering stone as I did earlier in the video for the infernal harpoon upgrade has turned out to be an extremely good investment. It is at 50.5% and I have been here for so many hours since I bought that one. If you're doing this grind, do yourself a favor and buy the infernal harpoon upgrade. That is another 300 permits completed and I'm going to be doing 300 and 300 for the last 600. And by the way, I don't think I've updated you guys on my fishing level for a bit. We are actually getting kind of close to even 85 fishing. So we are making insane progress. All right, let's get it to 1,300 permits fished up or get the big harpoon fish. Coming up on the last 100 permits now and the total loot value we've looted so far is just over 4 million GP, which is kind of crazy just from this pool. That is of course not counting in the value of these caskets, which we will open at the end. Well, it seems like another very disappointing looting. I only have three more to go and we got basically nothing, just some duplicates again turning into soaked pages. And that is now 1,300 permits looted out of the 1.6k. Here we go, this is going to be the final fishing level of the entire grind, 85 fishing, all the way from 78, even if we have not seen the harpoon fish, I'm happy with the fishing level progress. And finally, it has been such a long time, that is the last 300 permits, we have done 182 temporos in this video. And that took me around 30 hours to get, so let's go ahead and open the last 300 permits. See if we're going to be winning or losing this challenge by getting the big harpoon fish or absolutely nothing. And we of course also got 1,783,000 fishing experience. So definitely a good excuse to train my fishing. But let's go ahead and do the last 300 permits. Oh, no way! We got the Tome of Water, not the item I wanted, and that is... No, that is the same drop rate as the big harpoon fish, so that is unfortunate, but uh, cool to at least see one. They are 370k each. This really is it, isn't it? They last 100 in one more. 1,500 permits. Come on, please. There is a small chance we can still win this challenge. It is looking like we have another giveaway to do unless I get it here in the last seven permits. And after this, we have a lot of these caskets to open. I will, of course, show you guys all the collective loot after these last three, two, 
one, and the last one, absolutely nothing. This is everything we've got in 1,600 permits, 85 chests, one tome of water, and a bunch of soaked pages from duplicates. It is now time to open 85 of these Temporal's caskets, and on the left, of course, you can see the entirety of the drop table that we can get from these. It is very vast and pretty good loot, but the most important things at the bottom here is the clue scroll drop rates, which is actually pretty common and becomes even more common with the combat diaries. And as a matter of fact, since they changed the combat achievement point system, I do almost have the elite tier without barely doing any elite tasks, so that is quite interesting how that works. But let's go ahead and start opening these caskets. And we have the first clue scroll, easy clue scroll. That took a while, like 23 caskets. Let's actually quickly price check how much just these I've opened so far is worth. 194k. All right, first casket completed. Let's continue the opening. And we have a hard clue scroll this time. A bit faster than last. Actually a very long hard clue scroll, but that is now done. Let's continue the opening of the caskets. And we get another hard clue skull. That was also a very good opening. We got some rune items. Very quick one. Let's continue the opening. And already we have an easy clue skull. Easy and quick one. Let's continue. Hey, we get a medium clue skull. The first one. We now officially have a chance to get ranger boots. So let's keep opening and hopefully get more medium clue skulls. Because those honestly feel better than hards usually. And I get exactly what I was asking for. Absolutely beautiful area to keep opening these caskets with an absolutely bugged tree here. But let's see if we can get another clue scroll. And another medium. How long can I go this time without getting another clue scroll? Let's see. And, <laughs> and that is the answer. Literally one. And we have at the tail end of the opening, we only have four more to go. Another medium clue. And for the absolute last four, let's open them all in the same clip. Hopefully I don't get stopped by a clue skull. That does not seem to be the case. And there it is. This is all the loot that we got. And it is now time to open some clue scrolls. The chances of getting a master clue from this is kind of slim. But you can always hope to get one. And let's begin with the easy clue scrolls. Two of them. First one is 2000 GP. And second one, 644 GP. Yeah, definitely not a strong start. It is now time for the ranger boot chance. First medium, 3.6k, 100k and a collection log slot, not bad. 7k and lastly, 7.4k. Not too good, but we still have the three hard caskets. And these are going to be 51k, second one, 127k and actually a slot item. And lastly, are we going to get a master or not? The answer is we are not. As we lost the challenge in this video, I have a bit of a giveaway to do. The total giveaway I am giving away is 10 million for failing the Temporos challenge. And on top of that, all the loot from the caskets and the clue scrolls. And all of it comes out to a total of 11.15 million GP. How you participate in this giveaway is on the screen right now. Good luck to all of you guys who want to win this. Oh, and before we end the video, a quick shout out to the second channel that me, Seist, and Telecon recently made, where we are actually putting up group content of challenges, mini games, whatever, kind of like Gillenor Games type videos. And if you want to check that out, we are called the OSRS Syndicate. Link to that will be in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.